What's up guys, Guru Gang, Peeps, Padawans, welcome back to another edition of Wayback Wisdom Wednesday. This particular yogaism I'll be sharing with you today involves the senseless tragedy of 9-11, uh, September 11, 2001, that happened basically 18 years ago, um, it's, which is the anniversary of today. Um, it's hard to believe that 18 years ago that senseless tragedy that occurred um, still lingers on and um, it's the it's still the impact of it all um, you can still feel the emotion the, the uh, your thoughts uh, feelings or whatever the case may be you felt on um, that day 18 years ago can be still felt somewhat um, as you were thinking back on what you were doing on how what you were how you're reacting during that day and um, yeah um, this particular Yodaism was written four years after that on September 11 2005 and it and only and the reason it was written four year, four years later is I stumbled upon a video um, by, by Alan Jackson during it was a during an award show of some kind and he uh, conveyed his feelings in a song uh, and, and the title of it was where were you and that question sort of impacted me um, because when, it, when I was at my parents house during that time living with my parents and I basically was packing up my stuff um, for class and I was about to head out to Pensacola Christian College. I had the Today Show in the background as background noise. And as I turned around, putting my last book in my book bag, I saw the second plane, saw the second plane hit the tower. Now, I was in total shock and disbelief. And I headed to the living room and I, I noticed that my parents were in shock and total disbelief as well. Um, I didn't want to stay. I didn't stay long because I had to go to class. Um, luckily, I didn't have um, class beforehand, but after uh, chapel that day, I did have some class classes. But uh, when I headed did, did head towards head into PCC and into the Dale Horton Auditorium, Dale Horton Auditorium, if you will, there was a lot of controlled chaos, as I recall. Um, I remember faculty and staff trying to get uh, trying to give out the best information as they could uh, knowing that many students who lived in in and around New York were frantically trying to call family members loved ones and I, I, I remember hearing that there were several students um, uh, crying or bawling their eyes out because I couldn't get in contact with them because uh, lines were down and I know Dr. Molinex tried his best to calm the situation down the best he could and um, all throughout um, the chapel service it was all basically um, tensions were high in that and and giving their best uh, and faculty Dr. Molinex I believe um, Pastor Shetler was there as well trying to, to give his art give a heartfelt um, uh, speech to um, all of us including the students who are from New York and I know me being me work on and then I had that thought of how what would happen to uh, when it comes to uh, people working on the naval base I know it's gonna be suddenly totally locked down and that's after chapel I went to call my best friend Biggie Rollins may he rest in peace um and I contacted him asking um uh, what what's the protocol since um it's a military base and they're gonna be locked down and he just basically told me to um show your ID and let them know that you work there and I did and I showed my ID and then I was let through but it was highly locked down everything was locked down and there were the guards were armed to teeth. And when, we, when, when I went to work, uh, when I got to work, uh, we all had a, a sit down in depth meeting on what to do when it comes, comes to um, dealing with the kids, uh, knowing that they would probably have to act, they would probably have questions because um, they're probably, they're, they probably uh, 
got news or wind of the situation that happened in New York by way of news going around the school. So um, we did our best to basically just try to distract the kids from anything, um, all things, anything, the tragedy in New York City. And we just, as we just uh, did our best to that way, did our best to do that until their parents got there in order to have them uh, let them let them know what was going on so because some of these were younger kids and they they didn't know what was going on but some of the older kids knew what was going on so here's the like with that said here's the yodas i'm entitled where were you um concerning the tragedy of 9 11. someone once said tragedy carries a tremendous power within it power to cause grief power to cause mourning power to cause sadness and power to cause upset. It also carries a power to cause closeness, power to cause reflection, and power to cause change. A tragedy can become a positive reference or a negative reference depending on the meaning one attaches to it. The more powerful the tragedy, the more powerful the reference. Understand the tragedy and its potential power to change you for the better. For my generation, September 11th, 2001 will and forever be ingrained in our minds as it is compared to the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, which is an attack that changed all our lives from that moment on. On to the next. For the name Osama bin Laden will be synonymous with 9-11 and each one of us will gladly beat the living shiznit out of him for it. For a line would form stretching around the world, and it's probably a line people wouldn't mind waiting hours on end for. However, there is an uncertainty as to whether or not he is alive due to his health, as he is, was, using a dialysis machine. How, how hard is it to look for a guy who is sick, sick, lanky, sickly, ugly, and transporting a dialysis machine wherever he goes? For it's truly amazing that a man who looks like as if Italian actor Roberto Benigni and British actor Rowan Atkinson, aka Mr. Bean, had a child, has the ability to wield or wielded some major stroke among people that would absolutely die at his word. Essentially, there have been many questions people have asked, but the main question is why? Why did it happen and why did it happen to New York? For some, most, or all people believe that America considered itself invincible and nobody could touch us in our backyard, so to speak, but they were wrong. In one split second, everyone's seemingly normal Tuesday morning was turned upside down as each one of us experienced confusion, disbelief, shock, anger, as well as retribution, all in one balled up emotion. So why did it happen to New York and not to California, Illinois, Missouri, Nevada, etc.? In my opinion, New York is considered the hub where every person of every walk of life came to visit and quite possibly make it big. All right, on to the next. Without a doubt, the glue that held New York together during its time of crisis just went by one name, Rudy. Despite what he did as mayor before now that was wiped clean, the moments, events, after the senseless tragedy, he became known as the man who stepped up and took control of a perilous situation. He literally became the voice of New York, as many New Yorkers looked to him for information and, most importantly, comforting words, which would hopefully heal in mind, body, and soul. In his very own words that evening, Rudy Giuliani said, it's going to be a very difficult time. I don't think we know yet the pain we're going to feel. But the thing we have to focus on is getting the city through this and surviving and being stronger for it. New York is still here. And finally, in retrospect, it has been four years since that tragedy and yet it seems as if it was only yesterday that it happened. For the many people who valiantly risked their lives, such as the NYPD and NYFD, we will always keep them in our hearts and never forget what they did for those people. For the husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, cousins, friends, and co-workers, they have a piece missing from their heart, but eventually they moved on as best they can. On that day, I was getting ready for class while I was watching today's show, and as I turned around, that's when the second plane hit the tower. In the end, I asked this question 
Where Were You, When the World Stopped Turning on that September Day. And a song that reflects this thought is by Alan Jackson, entitled Where Were You. Um, and that, my friends, is the Yodism entitled Where Were You. Um, before I forget, uh, the link to the video itself by Alan Jackson and the music video on YouTube of Where You Were will be um, in the in the description area of this video. So I'll place that link there, um, like I said. Um, all right, as always, thoughts, musings, hate it, like it, dislike it, tolerated it. Um, I know I, I, know I, I basically told you my short uh, synopsis of where, where I was um, on, on that fateful day on, on September 11th. So give your com give your thoughts and uh, well, give your story on the comment section below on what you were doing, uh, what you were thinking emotionally, mentally when September 11th happened. I'd like to hear your stories. I'd like to read your stories um, of what you were doing and all that. Like I said, um, how you reacted on that particular day, on that fateful day on September 11th, 2001. Um, and with that said, uh, as always, uh, go to my social media links, Twitter, Facebook, uh, my Chuck Fan Fiction, I'm working on a new chapter, uh, currently, uh, as for my Yoda's and Blogspot page, I am currently working, in the process of working on another one, once I know, uh, what I'm be working on, uh, I'll post that when I'm finished. Uh, I'll give. I'll probably give updates on what on what I'll be uh, what I'll be working on that. Um, my Deviant Art page. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. I'm still uh, half locked into a uh, Bucky Barnes and also possibly adding in um, Falcon. Uh, so yeah, look forward to that. And with that said. Um, to my uh, followers, subscribers, I tip my hat to you. And if you're watching this video for the very first time, I tip my hat to you as well and hope you subscribe. Uh, more uh, Yoda Guru gang peeps and Padawans for this, for me, for, as followers, uh, subscribers. All right. Have a good one, guys. Later.